so just to start off, Mitch is sleeping. Unfortunately, we waited for a while. We really wanted him to be a part of this because it's such a big episode. We're just going to jump straight into this because what a big episode this was. This was like, um, I thought for a while this is going to be like one of those episodes that, all right, we're going to take a little dip out of the main story and just like talk about a whole bunch of other stuff and set up a whole bunch of other stuff. And yeah, so much like the, this one introduced and like all these other little plot threads we've got laid out ready for future of Mando and like um, stuff going ahead in this season and then even other shows. I suppose like the simplest thing we've got, like we have a new quest going ahead of um, Mando's where we get to Tython. Yeah! And I am really, really, really intrigued to see that because I feel like that'll be the first time we'll get a proper like sort of like looking into like the sort of the mystical side of Star Wars. So we haven't had that yet. We've had that in Clone Wars and Rebels, but it hasn't been yeah. a thing in Mando yet. Yeah, like in live action, it hasn't really been touched upon. So yeah. I can't wait to see what they do. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> um, To start off, I think we should just go into Dave Filoni directing because mm. he did a magnificent job. Like mm. he's improved so much since season one. Like well, obviously he yeah. did the first episode and then he did the fifth episode of season yeah. one. Yeah. So just like the improvement is just insane. You could tell he's put his heart and soul into this episode. I'd say that he's like um he's a he's a pretty good action director. I'd say like the mm. way of like um lots of people talk about like the the I, was, I saw quite a few people talking about the fight between Ahsoka and the Magistrate as being like a little flat with how it was shot, but I mm-hmm. I I'd kind of agree with that. But like the whole sequence at the start of the episode was Ahsoka finding the guards, and then the whole section when she was like scaling the um what's it called scaling the gatehouse yeah. and taking out the guys in the gong. So I. That bit was brilliant. Oh, that was like, brilliant. And we're just, just so standing good. there in the wind. I was like, oh, that's so yeah. good. I had a couple of predictions here and there going into the episode that I was expecting a few homages to Princess Mononoke. Mainly because I first saw the film, I watched the film for the first time about a week and a half ago, and I thought, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> and <clears throat> some of my predictions are wrong. I read about some of them on Reddit that I think um, I was expecting we're going to see Ahsoka chilling out in the in the jungle with some wolves. Uh, uh, <laughs> that would have been yeah, cool. But, and we didn't get that. And it's like, yeah, that's maybe would have been like a nod too far from like a Dave mm. Filoni episode. But the town is like the first shots of the town. I thought, oh my god, it looks exactly like the one. Yeah. Okay, in, it's from like the, yeah. It's just the layout of it and like the big main street through the center. You know, told them the gatehouse is like almost identical. Yeah, to it. very then, like, very identical to it. All the burnt down trees around it as well. I just thought, okay, yeah, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that like I was right about that. I got, I did have a good feeling yeah. about it was gonna be. So there's a few Mononoke. Easter eggs from Princess Mononoke in there, mm. and um, even just the scene. Even though I don't think, yeah, I can't remember because I that was a long time since I've watched Princess Mononoke. But like, even with the moon behind Ahsoka, I was like, oh, that yeah. gives me those Studio Ghibli f- like feels as well. Mm. That was such a beautiful shot with just her holding the baby and the moon's just like circling them. Oh, yeah. oh so beautiful. And even and the rooftop also- running as well. So oh, rooftop like, yeah. running. That was amazing. And even just that scene where like, you know, like they're sneaking around and she's on the roof trying to like kill them all like one by one. That gave me such Clone War vibes, like um, in Coruscant, the underground areas or even oh, just oh, other yeah, episodes. Totally. Such like Clone Wolf feels and then that moment where she like gets the double lightsaber that's my favorite shot from the entire episode just beautiful just so nice Grogu, Grogu. yes he Grogu has he has a that's name cool. he's no longer baby Yoda it's such a cute name and even just dude the fact that he grew up on Coruscant I know like yeah it was just like ex- what yeah. So he was there for like everything. So he was like obviously and probably trained by like Jedi's that we know. Mm. Probably we'll never know who trained him, but we we obviously get like an idea that he was trained by people that we know, that he knows people we know too, yeah. and that he was there when Anakin was like like yeah. on his way to kill the young legs. It's just it hits too close to home. It's just too much. But I wonder who took him away. Yeah, I think that's that, that that's probably something that I think we'll definitely learn about later on in the show. Because I hope like, so. I hope they do like, just leave it. I want to find out. Because I suppose, like, just looking at it from like a filmmaking perspective, that's like a that's a that's a question for the show rather than a question for the law. Mm. The thing of like, okay, who was it that that took him away? Because like, that's someone who's going to know 
that's probably the person will know the most about is past in the whole galaxy. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's someone that like, I think will definitely turn up at some point later on in Mando. I but, hope um, so. I think it's because I already, I always had the, the inkling that like whatever kind of backstory Grogu was going to have, either it wouldn't really be that important to the main plot or it'd just be something simple as, because I'd always just assume it's something like he's from whatever his species, his home world is. Exactly, some yeah. Some kind of poacher or somebody just like, you know, kidnapped and took him away was going to like sort of like auction him off at like a, you know, like yeah. sort of pets or something. Exactly. Um, because like, obviously then, it's said yeah. that he hid his like, his force powers away. And the first time he showed them probably was when he saved Din from the, um, the mud horn. Yeah. yeah. So it just shows that he has a lot of trust in Din as well when he did that as well. But also yeah. someone said it and I don't think it, this is going to happen. And I think it's just too on the nose that he's related to Yoda maybe. Yeah. I don't, I, I've seen um, a lot of people talking about Yaddle on Twitter recently. Mm. Yaddle is the um, other member of Yoda's species, only other one we've seen aside from Yoda and Grogu. Mm, yeah. It was in, as a member of the um, Jedi Council and the Phantom Menace. And um, mm, yeah. it's been pointed out that in Legends, it was said that she died between the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. We haven't, don't know anything about what happened to her in the canon. Mm. I think that she's Grogu's mother. Ooh. Yoda isn't the father. He might be like, because I mean, for one thing, he's like you know, eight hundred and seventy or whatever, <laughs> and she's and she's only something like two hundred and fifty yeah. as well. So like, she's sort of like you know, young mother. You know, it's like Jedi. You know, came to came to Coruscant, possibly pregnant at the time, had Grogu, and then yeah. decided um. Well, well, we'll raise the baby at the temple. You know, he'll just be yeah. like among the other children here. Yeah, because and even then... I was thinking, like, if it is Yoda's child, then that, like, that spins everything that he ever taught, like, not to have attachments and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's too much of a betrayal. And they wouldn't put that, for example, in, I think, The Mandalorian. I think that they would, if that was to happen, a moment like that, I think, would be, like, in the movies. And it would be yeah, for someone, definitely. like, maybe Luke... If Luke ever saw that, he would probably be so angry because of the attachment thing and all that stuff. But um, I don't, I don't think so. So I definitely think it's not. He's not the father. Yeah. He probably I just took care of Grogu and made sure yeah. he got the training he needed. I think as well as the other thing of um, a quote from, I think it was John Favreau who said it on um, uh, the um, Disney Gallery episodes um, for the first season about how um said that the way that, that they approach making the show is that um we're just kids playing with action figures and making a story out of them but it's all of the all of like the c grade characters that we've got the action figures of we couldn't get like luke and han and <laughs> Vader. we've just got ag88 and boba fett here yeah and we're doing a story about them and so i think that reason if they're gonna like explore more about any of the if they're going to explore more about either of them, Yoda or Yaddle, it'll be Yaddle, I think. I think so, yeah. Such I hope so. Character. Exactly. Like, we don't have too much on her. She's a blank slate, so they mm. can do more with her, is the thing. Yeah. Whereas, you know. And then also, it's like we've got a, a mystery that needs to be solved in the canon of, like, yeah, why is it that she disappeared between yeah. Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones? You know? Woo! That'll be interesting. Yeah. Hopefully, that does get addressed, maybe, if, like, Grogu ever gets his memory back. And we'll see, like, mm. who maybe took him away and, like, saved him. That'll be very interesting. Oh, so much information we need now. It's like, we got one answer, but now we have, like, 20 more questions. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> oh, we're left on our toes, which is good. I'm going to say we talk about uh, guest stars in this episode. Oh, uh, yes, let's um, do that. So, talk about Rosario Dawson a little bit, but, yeah, that's all we had. Um, now, what's the name? I just want to double check her name. Um... Diana Lee in a Santo was yes. great. So, uh, she's a um um actor and stunt performer, and I saw yeah, it's like most of her credits are um as stunt trainer on a bunch of different films. Yeah, like, um, and you told me, hmm. and that surprised me when you told me that she's Bruce Lee's goddaughter. Yeah, which is and, uh, incredible. That's why I was yeah. like, she looks familiar. Hmm. And she's been in a few movies I've watched, so that's why I was like, hmm. yeah, I've seen her before. Because I think it's something that um her father was like one of his main students. Ooh. So, like, so like he he taught her father and like was like a good friend with her father wow. and then um 
and then I'm guessing she would have learned from him. Yeah. And oh, wow. Learned. She was amazing. Oh, yeah. I would have liked to see more fight, like if the fight scene was longer, if we got to see more like cool tricks. But either yeah. way, I felt like her character was just, she kept oozing this tension throughout the whole yeah. thing. You didn't know what she was going to do. I loved it. And she was just very, very good actress in this this episode. I think um, I was really, really surprised that like, um, that they had Ahsoka turn up right off the bat. Dude. I, I thought that was, yeah. I was just like, oh yeah, we're going to warm in. We're not going to see her until like mid episode and just yeah. boom, she's there in the first few seconds. That was insane. I was just not That's ready for it. The only thing I think was like, could have been done a little bit better about that scene is like, I was expect, I mean, and maybe it's just because I like, I just generally really, really like these shots when I'm watching yeah. like different films and TV shows. But I always like a good reveal shot of like Ooh, when a character is yeah. introduced, when there's like this big shot of like getting to, so like, okay here they are this is this character mm. and then now back to the back to the action sort of thing yeah the soak we didn't really get that is sort of just like okay you see like most of her face just like in this one shot when she's taking it out of guard yeah get, like, like it would have been cool like if we like, just saw like either the back of her or the side of her and then it moved yeah. on she kept fighting and then her big reveal was when she was facing off the magistrate at the yeah, very yeah. end mm. like that would have been cool but yeah. anyway yeah I it was like, it was awesome. it was yeah. still awesome I, either way like oh yeah. it was just like oh, we've been waiting for this moment for so long we've been talking about it so much so just it's so exciting so yeah rosario uh, so yeah cool. it's like i i really liked that um because i'd heard lots of people um like a bunch of different rumors about like what her appearance in the show could be like whether it'd be more inspired by um by clone wars or mm -hmm. anything else i saw there was some people that was like um you know, no, falsely claiming that she was going to have a blue lightsabers in um in the show. That would have been but, um, that wouldn't have that wouldn't have made sense though yeah. because she abandoned them. So it's like, I why know. would she have blue lightsabers? There's um I I really really liked one thing they did. Of I was thinking, okay, so I've always described um the way they do like sort of um any references to extended canon in Mando as it's like. And you could what you could watch it either having just seen the movies or having mm. not seen any Star Wars and still sort of understand everything because the way they present Din as a character is basically everything we need to know about him we learn in um in the first episode of the first season, let alone like just like through the season. It's like yeah, even not knowing he was rescued, even not seeing the final flashback of, but of him being rescued by the watch, it's like it doesn't matter we learned that in the yeah. first episode that yeah he was brought into them you know he's like you know that sort of thing and so because he's so sheltered from the larger galaxy then you know the audience gets to experience all of these other characters which exactly yeah history in the universe but he doesn't know that and so i remember thinking all right there's as 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 well known as ahsoka is that she's still going to be like a bit of a bombshell being dropped on Quite oh, a yeah. few of the more casual fans, especially like like Anakin's Padawan. one. It's like there's so many people are gonna go, wait, what? Yeah, and, I know. But I, I I really really liked how they did it. Of we don't really, it's not. This never suggested like you would need to know more about her to understand the episode. She could just be just another Jedi. Exactly. Yeah. Jedi, but he finds she references Anakin directly. Yeah, but vaguely. But so it's like, need to, but the audience yeah. doesn't. The general audience doesn't need to doesn't know the name that, you yeah know? if you know you know but if you don't know then you're not left out oh yeah i do want to go back for the mention that ahsoka made of um anakin do you reckon she knows he's dead um that's a good question actually because i was um, thinking about that i was like i'm not sure if she'll know mm, yeah i think um she definitely would have sensed it she yeah i was thinking something. maybe because i was like maybe she didn't cut all connection off to him yeah, hopefully. Because I mean, remember, um, remember just how she reacted when he turned to the dark side in Revenge of the in Clone Wars. So <laughs> she definitely would have sent something. I and think. we saw it in Rebels too. That yeah, emotional. Like, they did that beautifully. Yeah, but um, but yeah, in the end, I really, really liked how <clears throat> how um how closely they had the way she was portrayed as like in line with everything that was set up through the end of Rebels. Yeah. So, it was really nice like her cloak as well which is like that's yeah like her cloak her yeah mm. at the end but um yeah it's um i think like i had a lot of theories about what the situation was going to be with like ezra and thrawn 
mm, yeah. something that we because last we saw Ahsoka was um yeah it's at the end of Rebels which is set shortly after Return of the Jedi Empire yeah. has fallen or on the way to, to falling Sabine and Ahsoka meet up they're gonna go and try and look for where Ezra and Thrawn have gone to yeah I was going to bring I was up as related to that this way they are going to go. This story is like this is sort of after that they have already they've done that. This has all happened. They've found them or whatever, mm-hmm. and then we're now. This is now a few years later. Soka sort of just like retired to like a quiet life on this jungle planet. Yeah, but it was like honestly really really interesting to see. Okay, I think this is going to be like a big thing. This is going to mm. be a big story. I feel yeah. of like the fact that she's still this is this is five years after that and she's still looking for him like Ezra and Thrawn have both been missing for 10 years yeah at this point and 10 years out in the unknown regions and like I think okay they're def- they've definitely got big plans for oh definitely for gonna go with this arc yeah but um I saw someone pointing out on um on I think it was on Star Wars leaks not speculation but um someone pointed out a thing that uh there's the insignia that they have for the the seventh imperial fleet, which is like Thrawn's main fleet from Rebels and from the novels. Ooh. That insignia is on the side of the HK eighty seven droids <gasps> on their heads. Oh, like, okay, okay, cool. I didn't know that. And yeah, I, I'm so I'm really, really, really intrigued with like what everything, what the the the, the what the plan is for that because I, yeah. I definitely because that's a plan. big plot point. Yeah, this is more yeah. than just like. It's more than the, just Moff just Gideon. throwing out ideas. This is yeah. like, this is like, this is, there is a plan at work here. There's a big plan. Because even and... we've said, like, what's going to happen in season three and season four, since yeah. we have been hinted that there is going to be a season four after this as well. Yeah. So it's like, they've got big plans for this yeah. show that we don't even know about. So... so I think it's time to, I think it's time to put my theory hat on here. Heck yeah, go and, for it. Okay. So first of all, as yeah, um, Rewinding to Supernova in Brisbane in about, I think it was just over, just on, just over two years ago, two years and about and a couple of weeks, something. Uh, Timothy Zahn, the creator of Grand Admiral Thrawn and writer of the Thrawn novel series, is, is there doing a panel. He said how when he watched the season final of Rebels, and also it's interesting learning about like what the kind of writing process of how it works, said how. He didn't know what was going to happen in the in that episode. He didn't mm-hmm. know what the story was going to be. He didn't know how the story was going to end. I'm guessing he'd been told that, oh yeah, don't worry, Thrawn's not going to die or anything. And <laughs> and so, but he was. But then, watching it happen, watching it uh, as as he used the pearl to send him and Thrawn out into somewhere, he said how he watched that and then he immediately went and started writing a pitch damn and he said how pitch was going to be for a two-part novel that was going to be the story of it follows it's told from ezra's perspective as him and thrawn are now like sort of like out in the in the unknown regions of the galaxy and ezra has a very very black and white mindset of Mm -hmm. lots of things like it's like the empire the bad guys we're the good guys and that's it thrawn you're a bad guy that's the way he presents everything and the story was going to be all about the two of them having to form an an unlikely alliance and him learning more about the sort of gray areas of like yeah that would be interesting and allies of enemies of enemies and you know how some evils can be more can be there can be necessary evils and versus far worse ones yeah and also it's going to be more about thrawn learning a little bit more about like sort of becoming more of a good guy learning more yeah. about the sort of like the you know the jedi side of things and so on because there's a threat that was set up way back in the first thrawn novel from the first of the new canon thrawn novels from i think it was 2014 or mm-hmm. 2016 of it was unnamed at that point but they're called the grisk or the grisk grisks ah. um grisks are an alien race from outside the galaxy that maraud around the unknown regions and are major enemies of the chiss thrawn's people and they've mostly kept to themselves but over the past few decades like going back to before the clone wars they've been sending scouts into the galaxy and into the unknown regions and exploring certain areas and the chiss are under the assumption that they're planning some kind of onslaught 
at some Ooh. point. Like they're going to try and take over the galaxy. Oh shit. What they think is that there's no way they'll be able to defend themselves from the Grisks alone. But if they were to ally with whichever power is in charge of the greater galaxy, the two of them united could be able to defeat the Grisks. That's ah. what the Chiss think. And it's set up in the novel that that's Thrawn's whole goal. That's the whole reason he's with the Empire in the first place, is they sent him there as an emissary to try and determine, okay, the Empire, are they strong enough as an ally to be able to help us to fight against the Grisks? If they are, then he's supposed to help the Empire. If they're not, he's supposed to assist in bringing down the Empire and putting a new, more powerful leadership in their place. That's terrifying! Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> and so this is then what the plot would have been for that two-part novel series of this is going to be as Thrawn taking Ezra to the Chiss homeworld and teaching him about, okay, this is, this is bigger than just the rebellion fighting the Empire. There's something way more dangerous that's going to happen that we we need your help with like seriously yeah. and so i am said at the panel that they have this rule with lucasfilm story group that any mm -hmm. any writer or creator that creates a certain character they then get the first say on what the next stage of that character's story is oh wow said nice. how, yeah so he said that um he basically can kind of do whatever he wants was thrown within the context of like the greater narrative and so on if like the story of group says yeah that'll work within any other things we have planned Ooh. but he can't do anything with ezra at the moment because mm. that stage of what happens after rebels with ezra is up to dave yeah fair enough only a few weeks after the panel the third novel in like the original like sort of first trilogy of modern throne books was announced i'm guessing tim had already been writing it at that point but then one that released earlier this year is one that's part of a three-part series back when Thrawn was with the Chiss before he joined the Empire, all about when they first learned about everything that was going on with the Grisks. Ooh. This one's set before the Clone Wars. Oh. And this one is all about setting up like more world building about, okay, introducing all the players of like how the Chiss society works, introducing a little more about the Grisks. And it's the thing that I remember reading the second Thrawn book which is really, really interesting one. It's like, it's set during the Clone Wars, actually. Ooh, it's about- I should go read it. Yeah, uh, I'll, I will can mail it to you if you want. It's like, I've got a, got a copy. So like, um, it's, um, it's uh, yeah, um, it's actually about Thrawn and Anakin. <gasps> and how- I want to read it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, the premise is that during the Clone War, there was like this one time where something happened. Padme was out on this like investigative mission, ended up getting- kidnapped by this one separatist group that's out there and Ooh. it was going to look for her and then bumped into Thrawn. The two of them they ended up working together to rescue Damn. her. This is an intercut with a story set in the present day of yeah. um, Thrawn and Vader on an assignment together at Palpatine's request. Oh, what? Oh, yeah, that's kind of like that mirror image that you sent me. That, like, yeah. it's like, yeah. Oh, is that the, that's the one with the cover, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'll pop it up here, guys, because yeah. Alex and yeah. Mitch showed me this ages ago, and I was like, this is amazing. So, yeah, yeah. now I want to read it. Alliances, it's called. <laughs> um, this is my theory. So, this is like mm -hmm. stuff, aside from like anything I know from the book and like anything I heard from the panel, this is what all just guesswork here. My guesswork is that. When they got Tim's pitch of the story about like Ezra and Thrawn, they thought, yeah, that's cool. That lines up with like some of the initial ideas that like Dave has had and like other people mm. have had. And then my guess is they thought, um, that's good, but we can do something bigger than just like a two part novel with that. Mm. And so they're going to save that for either part of the plot of the show, <laughs> whatever show it was the Rebel sequel in whatever form it'll be, will take. I possibly I'm thinking could even be something as big as a animated series, novel series, and then comics running alongside it or something. Oh, heck yeah. That'd be and amazing. Then, um, and then um, I thought, uh, don't do that too pit, that too novel pitch because we only go do this. Um, be a part of that later on, but we won't like just set up some more stuff about, you know, just like work around and like develop a little more, backstory to it all you can yeah. put a few things in place to then use later on of like additional mm. characters and plot lines but uh we're gonna make this into a big thing i'd say definitely after tonight's episode last night's episode of mando they'd make it into a huge thing I think. yeah so either it's gonna be like like you said they're gonna spin it off into another rebel series and yeah. maybe ahsoka turns up in that 
but yeah. they could also just continue it on the Mandalorian if they wanted to, because mm. it's possible that he could come turn up. I think and... it's gonna be even bigger than that, if if anything. Because I was thinking like, imagine the... if they did a movie. I reckon, I reckon this will be the big. It'll be the big plot after the Rise of Skywalker, if anything. Like <gasps> in that era is when the Grisk are going to actually attack. Actually, do but. Dude, if anything, it, like, dude, this yeah. is the thing. We, you and me and Mitch have talked about this. The movies scare us because of directors yeah. and writers. Yeah. Dave, direct a movie, please. Yeah. <laughs> or someone who you trust because yeah. we're scared. And if you, someone's going to take that storyline, they need to do it properly and they need to know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> I'd say, like, having a plan in place is one thing that helps because, like, um, <laughs> Like the sequel trilogy is like very explicitly they didn't have a plan. They're they didn't have a plan. And yeah. they even Le- Daisley Ridley and John Boyega said they didn't have a plan for the characters and the story, which yeah. is why a lot of fans, I mean, there were really good moments. There were golden moments <laughs> in those movies, but it's like there was so much more they could have done. So that's why for the people who do the next trilogy, please yeah. have a plan. <laughs> because <laughs> like even if it's just something as simple as like the pitch and the premise of exactly like, um pitch and premise put together by john favreau and dave filoni and timothy zahn you know like just the three of them just like okay here's the story this like yeah story yeah, by someone them, directed and then screenplay by someone you know yeah screenplay adapted you know adapted for the screen if by so and so yeah by someone else, exactly you know. um hopefully yeah, like, that'll be cool like, if that's the next part of the, like the movies i would really yeah. enjoy watching that because i feel like it's um I think like, I, cause I had, I was trying to figure out what's the timeline's gonna be of like, okay, so the Grisk are going to attack. When are they going to attack? Is it going to be between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, like in the sort mm. of Mando timeline? I don't think it would be because it no, would be yeah. like a big thing. You it know. would. And yeah. then it kind of would like, disrupt the timeline, which wouldn't really make yeah. too much sense. And so I thought if anything, it's gonna have to happen afterwards. And like, this is, it's the long game that the Grisk are planning. Like the fact that before the Clone Wars is when the Chiss realized. Exactly. Right, if they were there, down, it means that to, shit's yeah. been going down all this time. But because yeah. of the war and stuff, you know, no one's been able to take like, like it hasn't been a big problem and people yeah. haven't been taking notice of it. But now that all that's over, like mm. it's going to be a big deal. So yeah. Yeah. I think it's the other thing that, um, the other thing that made me like what, um, think when the Chris first turn up in mm-hmm. Throne Alliances, um, one of Anakin is that um, they turn up and like t- Tim always goes in depth with his descriptions of characters, of like environments, of like <laughs> everything. Everything is in depth, and so um, people joke about was it you know, like um, love hearing how um, exactly how many centimeters apart characters are standing. In, in novels. <laughs> but it's like it's fine. I love that sort of thing. But um, when the Grisks turn that. up, it's so vaguely described everything about them. We basically don't learn anything about what like they, what look, they like. look like nothing no. we just like they the sound they weird have. yeah <laughs> it's like um we learn nothing at all really and we learn really nothing about what their culture is like what their what their ships are like what their technology is like we learn tons of stuff about the chess but it's like it's a thing as well explicitly of the grisks that what they do is they um they don't have their own technology their own art their own culture and that's something that makes them really threatening to throw on who's always yeah. like, trying to learn about people's culture. Through so like art. if they don't, yeah, if they, they don't, don't have a art, culture, yeah. then it's like. Yeah. And because what they do is they just like, they just employ other races and peoples to do their dirty work. They like, you know, kidnap them into slavery, go, okay, we're going to use your ships. We're going to use your weapons and so on. They just use whatever they can find. And so. That's so really, weird. Yeah. It's and like. So they're, they're really, really unknowable in that sense. Yeah. Because, so know, like, yeah, you, you know, they're unpredictable. Yeah. They're worse than the Empire in that yeah. case. And oh. <laughs> because it's like it's not like okay, they're they're going to be attacking with fighters. Uh, hmm. well, they're going to be using this class of fighter. We can attack that. Which we don't know what kind of ships they're going yeah. to be using because they could use anything. Yeah, and exactly. So, and that's then, terrifying. Yeah, and so like um, but then like yeah, we only hear like really two two ways of describing it, which is saying that they have sunken eyes, and they have like sort of like slope their heads sort of like slope to a point. Or like extend out to a point in some way. That's the only thing we learn about what <laughs> at all they look like. And I thought, all right, this is being kept deliberately vague because yeah. they know that an art department is going to be making like either animated. Yeah, like or someone has to. Like it's coming. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah like they know it's going to happen these, you know and yeah. they're being left vague because all right yeah they're going to be used extensively later on and also it leaves it. enough to the imagination as well for the viewers so it's like or yeah. even readers so it's like we yeah. don't know what they look like so that makes it even more terrifying yeah so it's that like, too yeah mm-hmm. I There's like that like idea. A Lovecraftian sense of you know. Oh, dude! Of, I actually really yeah. want that that movie trilogy now. I want yeah. it because now I'm like, because even it's like so something that's new to Star Wars. Because obviously we knew the yeah. Empire, Palpatine's been overused too yeah. much. So now yeah. it's time for something new. And now that I, you've told me that, and like it feels like it's new, and it also feels Star Warsy. So it's like mm. I I want it. I want more of it now. I think we want something refreshing. Because yeah. obviously, and even with Mando, it's not too much though. Because we obviously know it's a part yeah. of the Empire, and it's still in the middle of like the like the other trilogy, and then the new trilogy. Mm. So it's like it, we still know what's happening, but it's yeah. still new. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not like too clone, like overbearing. It's like Clone Wars. We're retreading. Exactly. We're retreading established ground, but we're we're exploring other parts of it. You know. Yeah, exactly. We can set up new things in it, and we can we can learn more about what's going on. Yeah. In the greater galaxy. Because we don't have to worry about all these main central plots. That have exactly. To be. I read a tweet last night of like it was someone was talking about just like how good Mando works as a show of like being able to explore all these different continuity threads. And I said, they really just hit upon like the perfect premise of like we're just going to follow this dude that doesn't know anything about the galaxy, just going around the galaxy and meeting people and learning about stuff. Yeah, exactly. And, then they get and the to- fact that he called lightsabers laser swords, I was like. Yeah. But like it's like that just shows yeah. how much he doesn't know. It's yeah. just like it's huge. Get to see how we get like a little deeper back into the main story of like what's going on with Gideon and what's going on with like the Dark Troopers and everything. I feel like we're gonna get that like maybe not ex- ne- next episode. Maybe the two. Wait, we have three episodes left, so maybe second last episode and last episode we might get it. Mm. But I think last episode I feel like it's gonna be left on a massive cliffhanger. Oh, definitely. From, yeah. from what we've got. Like, I think it's going to be a big cliffhanger and then we have to wait till next year to find out what happens. Because I was thinking that, um, I saw like a, a few people were kind of, um, saying that this episode did feel like a little bit too much. Like you sort of, yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff set up. Mm. We're, we're kind of like, we're like, so we've ended on a, a bit of a cliffhanger last week and there's like really nothing to like continue on from that here. Yeah. And sort of like, you know, for like, for Star Wars fans and Star Wars viewers is exciting, but for just Mandalorian viewers, this one was like just a little bit of a step. Yeah, a like, little bit like eh, into that yeah. kind of fan service kind of Which is yeah. which is fair enough because it's yeah. like obviously they don't have the bigger picture like we do, which is fair yeah. enough. Like they'll just be like, Oh, okay, what's gonna happen yeah. next episode? But for yeah, us so, it's like Yeah. So much's gonna happen. We don't know when, we don't know why, but yeah. So yeah, it's a little bit like they ha- I think like they're they're trying to find the balance between like fan service and then just like you know balancing it out for the people who don't know everything about star wars but i think they've been doing so far a good job but i think with this episode particularly i think it was probably like i don't know what's going on like i think at the very least this one i think this is about as far as it'll go i think so too at least and i think um i was thinking as well um for the thing last night um yeah uh star wars rebels they had it kind of like that where in the first season Mm -hmm. sort of very much self-contained Mm. And it's sort of like, it's sort of really seems like it's just its own thing. We get a tease of Vader in the first episode. We get yeah, the, I remember really that. the deepest connection to another. Oh, and I suppose we get Lando and Bale and 3 people oh, yeah. at some point through it. But then at the end of the season, Tarkin's there and then Vader turns up and Ahsoka turn up. And it's like, okay, so we like, are going this to be is... connected to other stuff. Yeah. And then season two kind of leans way more into the deeper connections mm. with Ahsoka, Vader, Maul, yeah. and then the little guest appearances from Anakin and Yoda yeah. as well. But then, <laughs> but then after after season two, they then sort of like just go back into the main plot mm. a little more and focus more heavily on that through season three. I think they I might think do that too Mando. with Mandalorian yeah. as well. Because I mean, yeah. like they've, they've already hinted at different things, like whether it's going to be a new series or there's going to be a new movie. So it's yeah. like, it's good. But I think, yeah, definitely next season. And I think maybe the next three episodes are diving back into the main story, I yeah. think. And I think uh, uh, I now get a little more what um, Giancarlo Esposito said in an interview I did a few months back when he said the yeah. thing about how he said, we get, we're going to get really deep into the main, st- into what the show is all about 
through the third and fourth seasons. I thought he's oh, so right, silly, right. dude. I wonder what Disney thought like when he yeah. said fourth season. They probably were like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, I sort of I see more what the show's about now. Like the first season yeah. was sort of introducing the premise and like, okay, can it work on its own as just a story about yeah. the Mandalorian and the child? And showing that, okay, yeah, that works. It was pretty successful. That's that. And then and with this, this season, season, it's showing it's definitely successful. Yeah. This is yeah. season is sort of setting up its connections with the larger galaxy and, like, yeah. you know, showing its place in, <coughs> showing its place in the story and, like, all the greater context around it. And I feel like the next season will be, like, a half and half. Between. Yeah, It'll I think like, so. Despite all of its faults and despite um, a lot of the, like, sort of seemingly ignorance towards like the greater canon that the rise of skywalker had and it did introduce <laughs> a whole lot of things that can mm. be like really deeply explored later like this the, yeah. the eternal and leia's jedi training and like it's sort of that's one thing i always like really like the most about the film is that okay yeah a lot of this stuff is so like it just seemed like just throwing stuff into the movie just for like you know just for to like sort of mask the lack of plot or anything mm. but at the same time it's like all right, but this means we could get like a comic series at some point of like all about Leia training to yeah. become a Jedi. We and spoke about this too, and, yeah. And like, um, there's the, in the Vader comics at the moment, it's a story all about Vader discovering what was going on mm. with Exegol. Yeah. And like, um, I think they just released like the um, like sort of like the the synopsis for one of the issues coming up. It was like he's actually going there, and like, uh, oh shit. Um, <laughs> and so yeah. they're connecting it all yeah and i feel like that's the duty of like what stuff like the films can do and like all the sort of like greater canon is like it introduces the stuff that everything else can then talk about and elaborate on that's yeah. kind of the way it's gone with like all of the original movies and comics and novels and video games and everything yeah yeah, but yeah. that's what i always like to see in Star Wars. like when something introduces all this stuff and then another one goes okay so now let's add a little more backstory and let on that let's add context let's show you how this is actually connected to this and it's not as random and you know seemingly just like turning up out of nowhere as you thought this is actually yeah. really deeply connected to this other thing and yeah i'm intrigued to see them do a little more of that in mando hopefully through the first yeah season. i think i think so i think definitely mm. possibly in the next either maybe not next episode well maybe but maybe mm. the last two episodes get back deep dive into like the main story not sure about what the next episode is but we, we can talk yeah. about that in a bit yeah. um but like i definitely think they're gonna just deep dive into like what the main story is for mandalorian this mm. last few episodes and next season and obviously season four which has been hinted at and probably yeah. is going to happen with the amazing success that's happened already oh, so definitely. yeah it's definitely it's definitely gonna happen because the first season really like introduced a lot of interesting things like you know learning about the watch learning about the way mm. learning more about beskar learning about and all of the little teasers we got about like the night of a thousand tears yeah and, you know we don't know anything about that and i'm hoping mm. that's something that we get to like touch i hope so too yeah and it's like i said um in last week's episode about how i hope we get an episode maybe next season of talking all about grief and talking all about yes. like, all of his origins i wonder if we'll get one in this season of like sort of like a bit of a spotlight on gideon maybe sort of like, you know yeah. getting to learn about his story i hope really so yeah because there's nothing yeah. about him anywhere he's obviously yeah. a new character that no one's ever seen before he mm. seems like obviously he has a lot of power and just yeah. a lot of influence so i mean the fact that he like obviously may, not blackmail but maybe like paid that guy to put a tracker on din's ship yeah. it just shows that he has a big influence not only because he's part of the empire but because of his power <laughs> wonder yeah. what his backstory is <laughs> there's been a lot of theories about who the other jedi that he exactly i actually have a bring, list yeah. i wrote a list last night oh, yeah. okay uh, i wrote the list i'm not sure if like well if two of them i'm definitely not sure that, and i'm probably doubting that they're probably going to get them on the show but the list that i had of the jedi that are probably available and probably might listen to grogu is luke skywalker leia organa Ezra Bridger and Cal Kestis? Is that how you Kestis. say his name? Yep. Kestis, yeah. Um, so those are the people who were there. So I've seen lots of people talking about theorizing about Cal as well. Yeah. I think it would be cool, but again, I think it's one of those things, and like I mentioned about the um, the way they do it with the uh, Luke's film story group and the way it works, I think like they might want to keep his ultimate fate kind yeah, for... of um, 
yeah, keep that Fallen kind Order. of unknown until Respawn do the rest of do like, the game, the next yeah, two games, yeah, and then other than that, it's uh, but then then again, Ahsoka turned up in Rebels, and like we yeah. didn't know, and we found out about Siege of Mandalore later. Exactly. That being yeah. said, it was written by Dave Filoni when who also um and so, he's like, been fixing the the entire Star Wars universe recently. So <laughs> this is him continuing his character story as opposed to like a respawn are going to be doing an mm. episode of uh, of Mando that exactly. Cal ends up in. Yeah. Um. Leia, maybe, but I feel like at this stage she'd be like sort of much more involved in like everything that's going on with yeah. like, the politics. Mm. So I'm guessing it might be Ezra. Maybe, but then he's out in the unknown regions of Thrawn. Exactly. So that's the thing. So, Otherwise, Thrawn will be pulled back into the story. So I'm guessing yeah. it may not be him. So maybe later. Sleeves. I feel like Luke will be too much of a hit on the nose sort of thing. I don't know though. It's really? Like... You think? I mean, oh, if they but... brought Mark Hamill back, they could redeem well, him. <laughs> well, because that's the thing. It's like um. It could be Mark, but then this is like a little too early it's on. Too, yeah, too timeline. early on. We do have Sebastian Stan, though. <gasps> it's been a very popular fan cast. Dude, so, actually, wait. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <gasps> He's been, uh, it was the point I made um, to Mitch ahead of last night's episode. We were just talking about like if he could ever turn up in the show. And I said, I mean, like he could say, okay, yeah, but he's just a popular fan cast. You know, he might have the role. I mean, dude, and... Fancast was Rosario Dawson too, and they yeah, listened exactly. to us. They yeah. could have chosen anyone, but they chose her. Yeah. So and also he's already got the, <laughs> he's already got the full endorsement from Mark Hamill. It's a big joke they have going there yeah. he's Mark's son that they always joke about. Exactly. Oh, like, say, that would be so cool. Definitely at this point, I'd say, yeah, it's like it's very much a like, yeah, never say never situation. Yeah, never and that's like, true. Never say never. Yeah. And even the fact that they did get Rosario Dawson, they actually could have gotten anybody. But like yeah. for years, we just fan cast her as like Ahsoka. Like she mm. had the face. She looks like she could pull it off. But mm. no one was ever sure of it. We were like, ah, whatever. It's probably never yeah. going to happen. And then it did. And she did it so well. So that's why, yeah, it could be Luke. It yeah. actually could be Luke. Oh, dude. Oh, oh now I'm excited. Because yeah. I was like, nah, Luke's not going to turn up. Leia's not going to turn up. It's probably Ezra or Cal. But, but then you I think you know. said that. So, yeah. yeah. Oh. I, feel, I feel like, I mean, like, because, yeah, going into this season when, like, like we're sort of, like, we were so hyped about, uh, like, the season starts and, like, so hyped about, oh, my God, Cobb Vanth is in this. Yeah. And then there was the thinking when we're coming up to the Eris episode, it's mm. like what we, what a whole lot of people are thinking, what I was certainly thinking as well, seemed like the most logical the most likely thing that'll happen is okay yeah it's like din's going to find some of bo's allies and then mm. they're going to say you can find bo katan and she'll know where a jedi is and then that'll be like the rest of the arc mm. of the season is him finding bo and then that'll be the big thing towards the end of the season he finds bo but, so, but no, then no, she Bo's, just turns up no. <laughs> off the bat and she says no you're looking for a so katano mm. and then so like looking at it from that perspective it's like i think because i i reckon they're going to try and upstage everything they did in Rebels, is the thing. So Rebels, they had Ahsoka and Vader, and that we had Thrawn, had a oh, bunch yeah. of stuff as well. And then right at the end of the season, they had like the big thing was Ian McDermott as Palpatine. Oh, and yeah. That. And so I think, all right, they're going to want to go bigger than that. And so. Yeah, for this finale, along, this is the thing. Yeah. We know nothing of what could happen. So it's yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, someone kept saying that Boba Fett might come back somehow. Um, I, I think so. I think I think so. Whether it's at this season or next season, especially because a lot of people are starting to think that the child is going to be taken at the end of the season. So yeah, I think so too. I think so too because this kind of links into what we were talking about last last week. Yeah, last week when we were saying like the child may be taken and then used for the experiments again. So someone yeah. in my comment section was like, "The child gets taken next season. We get to see that the child's blood actually works on uh." Like uh um like the what's it called clones Gideon the, yeah the clones and the yeah. person who what who was giving themselves up for it so possibly the person oh, yeah, who's yeah. going to become Snoke maybe yeah. so then I think our theory might be I guess close to what we were talking about yeah. so <laughs> I'm excited saw, um, there's one thing I saw of um uh Katie O'Brien who played the um 
the Imperial Lieutenant that was with um, Gideon. Oh yes, in the last episode, Um, she was interviewed recently about like um, being on the show, and she mentioned a thing of Uh she mentions having she mentions like just getting to interact with the puppet of the child, getting to interact with the child. Now, (gasps) could be two things. Could be that there's a whole scene where Gideon's got the child, and she's there to. Or it could just be that, like, she visited the set when they were doing some child, some stuff with the child, and like, was just like getting to see the. Puppet. She shouldn't have said anything because we know who she is. So, yeah. oh god! But that just that confirms yeah. that the child is probably going to get taken. Yeah. Oh my god! But then again, it's like I feel it's the sort of thing. Like, I mean, if you're on the set of the Mandalorian, you're gonna be like, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Um, you have to say something, yeah. but like, I would like to see the baby. Yeah, I definitely think that. Yeah. This child is definitely going to be used for more experiments and experiments that will work, even yeah. though he's so tiny. Like we've said, like his blood is very strong because you're, they, you guys told me that Yoda's race is probably one of the most powerful mm. and stuff. And, and they, oh, they just said that themselves. He's got, yeah, very high. Yeah, strongest and, with the force. Yeah, yeah. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> like, and I think that's why everyone's questioning why Boba was just shown at the very end of the first episode. Because yeah. it feels like he has a bigger part, not only for yeah. his own show, But even for this one, like, it makes sense that he's there. It's, again, we've said this before. It makes sense that Bob is there. It makes sense that Bogotan is there. And it makes sense that Ahsoka is there. Um, Two of them have kind of, like, fulfilled their purpose in a way. And I feel like we're going to see both of them again. But with Boba Fett, I feel like we need a bit more from him. Yeah. Just to see a bit more. Because, like, yeah, from the general audience perspective, and again, like I said, Mando, you you just think of, okay, imagine someone who knows nothing about Star Mm. Wars watching this. He's just this dude that turns Yeah, up. Well, it's like, like, oh, who is he? Like, you know that it's foreshadowing because it's mm. like, okay, it's like a big moment of like, okay, this guy is here. It's like when I was talking about reveal yeah. shots, it's like, yeah, that's a heck of a reveal yeah. shot there. Because it was because like, like, we forgot about him yeah. the entire episode and then he turned up at the end and it was like, oh shit, so he actually is there. So yeah, you just yeah. like, it's there. Yeah, I think that they'll like, like just to make it like work in the sense of the show, there has to be like just one other little sequence. And I mm. think... I'm thinking that that's what, well, I'm thinking and hoping that that's what all of those reports about Robert and James are about. Yeah. Is that, yeah, like, they got their facts mixed up, though. Yeah, Robert did a whole episode and James just did a sequence. Maybe, of, yeah. An episode. That's what I think happened. So we'll find <laughs> out. Um, I hope so, yeah. Yeah. But it's like, it all lines up. It all kind of makes sense. It's like, and it also, I suppose, there's another thing of like, I thought, okay, so the film that James was going to direct was called off from shooting right now. Mm. And he said, instead, I'm just going to be writing a screenplay. And so I thought, well, you don't have any other projects lined up to direct, do you, James? Because directing and shooting a film and writing a screenplay are kind of different things. Yeah. You know? And so... like, you, can, you don't necessarily have to do one to your own. You don't exactly. necessarily have to avoid one to do the other, you know. So who knows? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Hopefully. Because, I mean, like, I feel like I'm not yeah. sure if it would happen. I mean, if... But like, if like, if Boba not Boba, blah, 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 if Grogu is captured at the end of this season, like if it is Boba Fett who goes after him, like he may like obviously, obviously he probably has means to get off Tatooine and all that stuff. So it's like, mm. is he getting? Does he get paid by the Empire to go in like, well, by Gideon to go and get Grogu? Because obviously with the tracker, it means he can also go and find him. So. Yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah, I'm, just, they could, I'm nervous, I, but yeah. But it also yeah, might be Gideon could. who goes after Din, and you we see the dark saber again. So I feel like um I just thought of something then that I haven't thought of before. Like the idea of yeah, Boba would want to go after Din because Din still got his armor. Exactly. Like, we don't know I where thought, the armor went, so it's obviously yeah. still on the ship. Yeah, we've had like just another like sort of hammering home of like just a little bit of a theme in the show so far. Of yeah, Beskar should belong to a Mandalorian. It's like you know that gets, exactly. Gets so quite a lot. I feel so like, like yeah, all right, yeah, take yeah. out take out Dan, give me the child, and then you'll get to keep your best guy armor. Best guy yeah. should belong to a Mandalorian. Yeah, as exactly. Client, and as the magistrate said. But yeah. I feel like there's a reason why they showed Boba, and maybe like they're trying to make us forget about him, but everyone keeps bringing him up. Like, yeah. where's Boba? Where's Boba? So I feel like he has to come back in one episode yeah. or something. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I do want to see more of Boba. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Aftermath. May the force be with you. And this is the way. This is the way.
Oh, this feels so sad without Mitch, but... Yeah. Whee!